What's going on guys and welcome back to my adventure moto. Today we are testing the new Multistrada V2S. I wanted to take the V4 but it was uh, it was booked out all day. So um, managed to get a ride on the V2S which um, is lovely. It's not quite the V4 um, but it does everything that you could possibly want out of a, an adventure touring bike. But make sure if you're looking for one of these, you've got some deep pockets because they're pretty spenny. So stick around, see what I think. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, um, and comment below if you've if you've got a multi strider, if you're looking to buy one, and let me know what you think. We are here at Ducati Nottingham, going to test ride the Multistrada V2S. And first impressions is, it feels big, but it's not. And it feels a lot more sporty than my 890 Adventure arm. It feels like you sit in it, this big tank, and you've got the big old fairing. But, it feels comfy. You could definitely um, chew out some serious miles on this. Ooh. The seat height is a lot lower as well than my uh, KTM. My KTM, I'm, a, I'm just on sort of, I wouldn't say on my tiptoes, but I'm definitely not flat footed. Way up. Definitely not flat footed when I'm stopped on my KTM. Um, and I'm six foot, literally just over, just a touch over six foot. Are you gonna let me in? Yeah, thanks, mate. You've got this nice adjustable screen on there as well, which I like. Nice and easy to use. Feels wide. Handlebars feel very wide. And I've never ridden a Ducati before. I've always wanted to. Love Ducatis. Think they're bloody amazing. The Italian Stallions. And this is the V2S. Um, which... I was just chatting to the guy in the dealership and sort of asking the difference between the V2 and the V2S. And the V2S is basically a bit of a nicer spec. You've got the coloured dash, you've got LED lights, you've got uh, electronic, electronic adjustable suspension, which kind of changes when you change the mode. So at the minute we're in touring um, and the sort of suspension and everything's all set to that, but you can adjust it. Um, and this comes in at just shy of 15 grand, which is pretty pricey. Adventure bikes, or well, dual sport bikes, whatever you want to call them, <clears throat> do tend to get a bit of a bad rep. Not a lot of people like them, but there's the reason that they are one of the most sold bikes in the country because they just handle everything perfectly. If you want to chew out miles on the motorway, get yourself something like this. If you want to do a bit of off roading, like I do, but nothing major get yourself one of these if you want to commute and be comfortable and have all the bits like the heated grips cruise control nice screen get yourself one of these 
dual sport adventure bikes are massively underrated in my opinion um, most of the people that say that they don't like them they've probably never ridden one um, and probably think they're for old men which I'm 29 years old but my body feels like I'm about 90 so it probably suits me quite well nice Tiger 900 oh one thing I have just remembered is that this this has got road tyres on and my bike does not have road tyres so means we could probably have a bit more fun with this one thing as well I forgot to mention on the S version it does come with a quick shifter up and down which is something that I do uh, since having it I just think is a is a vital thing to have right let's get this cruise control set see where we are is it just me or is this bouncing up and down a bit so far so good though it's nice and comfortable you've got heated grips you sit very much in the bike so I'm sat very planted in this and this big fairing feels like it's given me a lot of uh, a lot of protection to uh, let's put it into sport mode there are close throttle so it's in sport mode now and she's got some punch I'll tell you that and this is the smaller version I did want to try the V4 um, but that was booked out all day so hopefully I'll get back another day and give the V4 a go but you can definitely uh... oh she's got some punch she has bloody hell little extras over this the standard V2S um, it's got things like fog lights which they put on um, and they put a full pannier system which actually looked really nice and how quick it was for them to take it off for me I didn't really want to go riding with full full set of luggage when I'm just taking this out for a quick little blast one thing it does have is self cancelling indicators which I love one thing that KTM need to put on the 890 Adventure R is self cancelling indicators it just sits so well and it feels it feels big and heavy but I think that is the beauty of adventure bikes is that although they are big and they are heavy you can you still can throw them around and have a bit of fun with them you can you don't have to dawdle and cruise you still can throw it into corners with the right tires on and one thing I have just noticed actually the pillion seat on this is raised up slightly so it sits higher than the than the rider's seat which I've just felt as a little bit of a backrest which is, just gives you that nice bit of safety and security when you are pinning it that you do have that just little support behind your back is nice there you are we're back at home keyless start which I like but it's um, I, I th think it's about cars my cars keyless start and I, if you've had a keyless start car and you've lost your keys in the car you know how annoying it is it's cool it's techy but is it needed you've got to put your keys somewhere so you might as well put them in a slot but hey it's 2022 
it is lovely and it feels quite lively in this sport setting what it's done is it's firmed up the suspension and made the throttle response really quite pokey should we say and what a beautiful day for it look at this sun's out blue sky I don't know what temperature it is because it's not telling me but I think it's probably about 12 or 13 degrees it's not warm but if it was cold I've got the heated grips what's the standing position like oh not sure about that you get when you're standing it's not because you've got the swing arm down there you can't really I've got size 11 feet and standing up is it the swing arm or the exhaust it's not the best for standing up but would you buy a multi-strada and do a lot of off-road hmm probably not you're probably gonna go down the route of a GS or maybe super adventure or something like that hey up oh, blues and twos coming out So, I, I don't see this as a bike for someone who's going to be doing a lot of off-roading on it. But you would like to have that option. And it does have, so you've got sports, touring, urban, which I think is a nice setting to have. So if you're just pootling around the town. Um, and then you've got uh, enduro mode as well, which is a bit more off-road focused. Although with these tyres, I would not be going off-road. The cruise control on this... You, it's it's cancelable with uh, either brake or clutch but one thing it doesn't have and that the last few bikes that I've ridden with cruise control have is you have the roll off on the throttle so you can just blip the throttle forward just as, it's only a millimetre or two but that just cancels the cruise control which I just think is nice so you don't have to pop your clutch or tap your brake just to um, cancel the cruise control you can just literally blip the throttle forward but this doesn't seem to have it so this is uh, the the V2S is 936 cc and punches out about 87 newton meters of torque which means you sure can give it a bit And she doesn't half fly, I tell you that. And this is only the V2. It's got a very nice planted position. It feels very sturdy. Okay, now. Alright. And yeah, you can lean it into a corner. And have some fun on it so what we're in we're in fourth now and the brakes are bloody magic So it is a punchy little thing. It's also an expensive little thing. Would I be dropping nearly 15 grand on one of these? Depends. Depends what I wanted a bike for. If I wanted a purely road touring bike, yeah, I probably would. But then I'd be maybe tempted with the V4. I don't know why you don't need the V4. This has got plenty of poke. But maybe if you wanted something a little bit bigger, a little bit more sturdy, then the V4 might be the way to go. But so far, this is a, a bloody weapon of a bike. Good old Italian stallion. 
One thing that is bugging me though is this screen bouncing around. I think that needs to be set. So we'll have a little little play around here. We'll flick it. Let's change the mode. There you go. So you push and hold that on the left over here, and then go down to touring. So this changes the engine traction control, the ABS, the suspension settings, the preload, quick shifter up and down. So if we push that in, close the throttle, it's now in touring mode. I like that. Nice and simple, easy to use. And the throttle response is definitely changed from, from Sport. Sport is um, lively, but fun. It is amazing, and I know Ducati have a following similar to that of Harley's, of people just have Ducati after Ducati. And they are lovely bikes. I can't imagine having a bike without cruise control now. It's one of those things that people said when air conditioning first came into cars. And they said, oh, I'll never have a car without air conditioning. I don't think I'll ever have a bike without cruise control and, to be honest, without heated grips. Riding in England, people will understand what it's like riding without heated grips. The, the pain in the end of your fingers at times is horrible. The power delivery is nice and smooth and it just feels lovely to ride. It's smooth, it's punchy, it's comfortable. It's everything that you kind of, you want in a bike. So I hate to say it, but I would say this is more comfortable than my KTM. Now, that's nothing against my KTM at all, but this is, it's, it's designed to be a bit comfier, isn't it? It's designed to be uh, a mile horse and just churn out miles and go around lanes like this, perfect. Whereas the KTM is sort of best of both worlds. You can do roads like this and you can do motorway miles, but you can also pin it down some lanes. If you've not seen it yet, check out this latest video that I did uh, around some lanes in uh, sort of Newark and Sherwood Forest around there. So um, click the link up the top uh, and check out that video. So I thought we were going on the motorway, but we're not. We're going to just stick on the dual carriage, right? Six or one half a dozen of another. Oh, bloody hell, someone's cacked themselves. So it's in touring at the minute. Let's get that screen up. Get a bit more wind protection. I love that quick adjustment on the screen. Just means that when you put, put it in cruise, when you're riding along, you can get on the motorway, the dual carriageway, whatever. Flick the screen up and away you go. God, it does smell. I come down this road every single day and I've never smelt that. Four. Oh, smells worse than my Labrador's cag. If you've got a multi strada, maybe an old one. Um, or maybe a new one, maybe you're, you've got the V2S, maybe you're looking to buy the V2S. Let me know in the comments below and let me know what you think of it or if you're just getting one, um, let me know why you're buying one. Because for me, I think this is one of the nicest bikes I've ridden, but it is also one of the most expensive. See, there it is again, I need to cancel my cruise now, but just flipping it forward doesn't do it. 
got a quick tap on the brake. I did mention that I think this is smoother than my KTM, but one thing I've just remembered is that this has got pure road tyres and my bike's got Hovis best of both tyres. So that probably plays, plays a part of it, but all in all, this is so smooth and just feels so planted and everything feels very well made. A bit wide. It just feels solid. You know when you just get on a bike and it just feels solid. This is a best part of 15 grand adventure touring bike. It is lovely. It's so planted, it feels so smooth. The throttle is the throttle delivery is nice and smooth. It's got all the technology you could possibly want on a bike. Would I have one? For what I am wanting out of a, an adventure bike, no I wouldn't. But if I just wanted a bike to go out riding on a Saturday, Sunday, go over to Skegness, whatever it is, do a long ride on the road. 100% out of one of these I'm looking forward to testing the V4 um, and I'd probably end up down that route but I don't I, I couldn't rule this out if I wanted a, a, a purely road specific bike and I know that it can do off-road it's got the enduro settings you could put some Hovis best of both tires on um, and enjoy it off-road um, but then I look at it and go well it's a 15 grand lovely Italian bike would I want to put it down on the dirt I probably wouldn't um, so if you're looking for a midweight because it is a midweight at 930 cc um, if you're looking for a midweight adventure touring bike and you've got some pretty deep pockets then the Multistrada could well be for you. We've got my man on a Suzuki. That's another bike I haven't ridden actually. I would like to ride a Suzuki. It seems to be doing um, fairly well this year in the MotoGP I'd say. Fairly well. Yamaha need to sort their uh, sort the shit out don't they? If it weren't for Fabio, my god. Fabio, they'd be absolutely bloody nowhere. That boy is a machine. Like him a lot. Go on then. In fact, that's a bike I might try and take out. Is the uh, Tracer GT, and see what that's like. Last year I rode the uh, Tiger Triumph 900. Uh, I think it was the GT Pro I rode. And that was lovely. Um, the thing is, that yeah, when you're talking 12, 13, 14 thousand pounds for a bike in this mid midway adventure dual sport category, there's not really any bad ones. There's preferences. There's things that are going to be more tailored towards you. But there's nothing really that's a bad bike. I don't think I've ever got on a bike and gone, oh, this feels horrible. Some people would say that about my Harley, but I love that. And yes, it's like riding a big tractor, but a big, cool tractor. So we'll get this back to the dealership, head back home, take the dogs out for a walk because it's nice and sunny. Sorry, mate. And uh, oh, we need to come across here. The only thing I would say that has frustrated me a little bit about this bike, when you're spending nearly £15,000 on a bike, you want it to be premium. And that, this TFT display, when you're in low revs and you give it a bit, God, it bounces around like a bloody pogo stick. I don't know whether you can see that, but it's all over the shop.
but that's just a little gripe but would that frustrate me if I'd spent all that money yes it would 15,000 pounds is a lot of money but that's just one little thing you've got everything else you've got your heated grips you got your fog lights you've got your crash bars you got your four different modes you got your adjustable screen and you've got about that bloody cruise control thing doing me again and you've got a bike that looks the absolute bollocks rides beautiful and is a uh, a fine piece of Italian engineering hey oh that will probably do it for the ride today thank you very much for joining me yet again please don't forget to like subscribe comment and uh, let me know down below what you think of uh, what you think of this it's lovely by the way and I'd urge anyone who can to get out get your leg over it and uh, go and have a bit of fun thanks guys I'll see you next time <laughs> So when I was mentioning about standing up and having my feet caught, it was on this exhaust cover. So as you're standing up, unless you stood on your heels, your feet are catching on this, which isn't the best. But like I say, how much standing up off-road riding are you going to do?